This is man meat barbecue, yep. not man fruit barbecue. Exactly. So that's a whole different channel. We should make a man fruit barbecue that channel. Could, that could be a fantastic. Or just man fruit. I think that's a whole no, different that's channel. We're going a whole different route. What's up, guys? I'm Mikey with Man Meat Barbecue. This is Chandler with Chandler Lyles and then Chandler or then Lyles Barbecue and then Mama Lyles. If you don't know who they are, you got to go check out all of those on Instagram, Facebook. Do you Twitter? Do you tweet? I, I get around the Twitter. Do you tweet it, Twitter, 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 Twitter? I get around the Twitter. Um, and then, obviously, on YouTube, where we're at right now, make sure you go check out his channel. Um, He's going to link it below. Link it below. He's new to YouTube. He doesn't know to do that. <laughs> That's why I'm here. Exactly. This is why we, we drove him up here for this reason. Um, so, Chandler's going to make an apple chutney. Yeah, well, you, you, you called me when you found out I was coming up here, and you were like, I've got this beautiful pork chop I've been wanting to do. Let's do it. You guys have ridiculously cold weather here in Chicago, so the <laughs> fact that we're going outside to grill is North borderline insanity. No, no, this is insanity. No, no, but he was like, I'm doing this pork chop, and I was like, well, let's not just do a regular pork chop. Let's, you know, let's, 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 up it up. let's fancy it up a little bit. Let's show them what some barbecue guys can do. We know what a chutney is. Do we? We now know what a chutney is. <laughs> and it's so easy to do that like, you know, you're gonna be able to like, your girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, whoever's out there barbecuing, you're gonna be able to do this, lay it across a pork chop with like your, as you're presenting it. And it's gonna be beautiful. And people are gonna be like, what culinary school did you go to? And you'll be like, chutney school, baby. Yeah. Manmeatbarbecue.com. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, if you're going to let me drive for a second, we're going to put this drive, chutney together. Drive. Start with the chutney because it takes about an hour in total time. You get about 15 minutes of prep time, and usually it pork takes chop about... Pork chop is not. Yeah, yeah, pork chop. And what's the thickness on our chop today? It's about an inch and a little, little under an inch and a quarter. Yeah, you're going to cook it to... What temperature are we cooking it to? I like to cook my pork chops to a... About 140, 145. Yeah. Right, I in know that, right in that medium. Right in that medium. I know that people freak out about pork being medium. It's gonna be okay, I promise. Yeah. If there's a little bit of pink in there, it's just a little bit more flavor. It's gonna be fantastic. Yeah, yeah I, I, and, and that's gonna take max 15 minutes on the grill, like depending on how hot your grill is. So start with the chutney. That's the thing when you're doing these like layered recipes is you always stack what is the, like lay it out on a timeline if it's yeah. easier for you. And then that way you know chutney first, then the potatoes, then the this, then the this, whatever's on your, your plate for that night. And then, yeah, and make sure you kind of time to, if you if you want to eat warm food and you're not like me and probably you too, uh, <laughs> we eat a lot of cold food because we photograph the shit yeah, out of it. Yeah. And um, it, it's usually cold by the time you do that. But Which by the way, if you want to see how to photograph your food better, click right above Mikey's head right now. And you'll be able to see that video. That's YouTube magic. Baby. Oh, YouTube magic. Okay. <laughs> I thought I thought that just happened in real life. But uh, we're we're gonna do some fun stuff. So let's get let's, let's do it. Chinese. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Super simple recipe. Let's go over the ingredient list. First thing, we've got two Granny Smith apples here. Those are the green ones. It's a true story. <laughs> my my good friend here had no idea what a Granny Smith apple was. I'm on the phone, he's picking up the groceries for today as I'm driving into town. And like, he goes, he goes, I don't think we have Granny Smiths. And I'm like, all right, it's Chicago. You guys are weird. Like, maybe you don't. <laughs> and he's like, I don't know, there's some green ones here. Do you want those? And I'm like, those are the Granny Smiths. So, yep. Really good at picking out apples, guys. <laughs> I told him, I was like, this is man meat barbecue, yep. not man fruit barbecue. Exactly. So that's a whole different channel. We should make a man fruit barbecue that could, channel. That could be a fantastic. Or just man fruit. I think that's a whole no, different that's channel. Not, we're going a whole different way. So the ingredients today, super simple. We got Granny Smith apples. You're going to need two of them. We've got a uh, white onion here. You're going to need half of that. We're going to do a fine dice on those. Uh, we've got an orange. We want the zest of one orange. Uh, we want about a tablespoon of ground ginger. Uh, we got a half a cup here of apple cider vinegar. And then we want about a tablespoon of cinnamon. We're going to try to eat a tablespoon of cinnamon. Like all at once? I've I've seen it done on YouTube. I'm I'm I like to keep my brain cells. So. <laughs> you know, every time you do a stupid food challenge or stupid anything challenge, like it you, gets bad. You take a year off your life. Yeah, probably. Proven fact. I'm living till next year. <laughs> <laughs> and the last ingredient we got is a uh, half a cup of brown sugar. And literally, the directions for this are so easy. You chop them all up, grind them, pour them out 
and you just put it all in the pan at one time, get your pan super hot, have all your liquid in there boiling, and then once it boils, reduce it back down to a simmer. That's it. Sounds easy enough. Let it simmer for 45 minutes. All that water will cook out, and it, what's left is this really nice, thick, uh, it, it chutney, but like, you know, almost jam-like in a lot of paste. ways. Yeah, and, and then you just lay it right across your pork chop. Sweetness in there with the pork, money. Sounds fantastic. I mean, how many people in the world make, you know, they cook pork shoulders with apple wood or fruit woods? Apple just pairs really well with pork. Yeah, and it's, it's, the same, it's the same principle here. That's why we want to do this sort of thing, but you're not just going to put slices of raw Granny Smiths you never know. on the pork chop. <laughs> What's up guys? So here's my part of the video. We are gonna do I don't I don't beautiful no I need to say something really quick. No. I'm a little upset that I got the girly chutney. And you, you get you the curly pick, chutney. You picked the girly <laughs> chutney. I'm gonna go back here to my chutney while you introduce people. Guys, look at that beautiful pork chop. There's a little bit of marbling through it. It's about an I would say about an inch. A little bit over an inch. Um, yeah, a little, like an inch and a quarter. Treat it like a very pretty piece of meat. We're going to put a little bit of rub on it, nothing crazy, and then we're going to put it on the smoker. We're going to leave it indirect for about 15 to 20 minutes. I know we said 15 minutes that we're going to get the whole thing done. We lied. We're going to leave it indirect 15, 20 minutes, then we're going to get him a nice sear. Hot sear. Can you talk about rubs for a minute? Because I, I feel like rubs are... To me, so overblown. Like people yeah. get so into rubs, and it becomes this insanity of like yeah. magic chasing. Just it, it, it's it's not worth it, you know. Like, what do you think about rubs? Because uh, people are like, oh, a little of this, a little of that. Like, it's like a good story. Like you want to tell your friends, but it, nobody tastes your four ounces of cocoa powder you got in there. <laughs> If you want to layer flavor, you can. If you want to put something sweet and then a little bit of heat on it, or if you put a little bit of heat first so that it finishes with that with that heat, just depending on your flavor profile. Um, the rub that I'm going to be using is going to be a basic, basic barbecue rub. It's actually from my catering company. It is our house rub. Uh, it's going to give really nice color. It's going to add a little bit of heat on the back end, but it's gonna, not going to be anything crazy. The other thing that I find that's really important in it is my rub contains no sugar. Uh, with it containing no sugar, uh, it's twofold. One, sugar burns yep. and turns black. Yep. And I don't want that, I want nice color. And two, some people just don't want sugar in their rub. So, what are you gonna add? Container what, right there? what do you got in here to, to add to the... To make it sweet? So we get a little bit of sweetness in there. You like stevia or something? So we use a little bit of honey powder. Honey powder, I like it. So. Nice. Nice, easy. And a lot of times while he's doing this, you can go to a local farmer's market and pick up some really nice, some, uh, um, they, they sell honey powder at farmer's markets a lot of times. Guys, it should be called a pat, not a rub, because um, you shouldn't really, I mean, you rub it in, but you don't really have to rub it. I like to just pat it down, mm -hmm. make sure I get a nice coating, nice even coating. Look how beautiful that looks. Super ready, it's gonna go on the cooker and then uh, we're gonna have some fun with it. Since Chandler's in town, we got a little bit of pecan wood for him. We heard he likes it. The Georgia boy in me. The Georgia boy in him. Inspired. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw a little bit of pecan. I don't recommend you actually touching stuff like this. This is a do as I say, this is not as I do as I do. Yeah. Take that beautiful pork chop, we're gonna set it right there. 
right there on the cooker. Close her up, let her smoke. Do about 15, 20 minutes. Let me temp it. We are, um, got that pork chop. Looks really, really nice. We're, we're gonna reverse sear it. We're at right around 135 degrees. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it off this beautiful PK grill. We're gonna bring it over to the Minimax that is roughly temping at 650. And we're gonna throw that baby right there and let her go for a little bit. Let's bring that inside. So we're back with our beautiful pork chop that we seared all pretty and beautiful. Looks very, very nice. Our apple chutney is nice and done. Um, do you want to slice it up and put it nicely on the plate? What's your thoughts? This is your channel, man. I'm just here to make it. So let's do that. Let's, let, let's slice this up. I'm going to turn this around just a little bit. I'm going to slice up that pork chop just a little bit. I'm going to be honest with you. You're not going to plate this piece, so. Well, we're not gonna play it anymore. Oh my God. That is really good. <laughs> right, so what I like to do is I like to grab a pair of gloves because I'm gonna touch it and some other people are gonna eat it. And, uh, Sanitation is important when you're serving other people. Very, very true. But and that rub is, that rub has got some kick to it. Spot on though, isn't it? It's good though. It's good. It's not too salty. And a lot of people that put pork rubs on, they put way too much salt on their pork. And pork's not going to hold up the salt like that. I love the smoke ring in these slices though. A little bit of smoke ring, beautiful glisten, not dry. We let it rest. Talk a little bit about the photography aspect of it in a second. Um, make that nice and pretty. Just a couple pieces. Grab your favorite thing. I call the paper towel. I'm gonna eat while he works. Clean that plate up. Make sure it looks pretty. See, he's a neurotic photographer. He's good. I'm not. I would just. Throw it on there and let's roll. That's why Mikey's better than me. This is why I don't eat warm food. So we're gonna take a little bit of this chutney. So as you can see with this chutney, and this well-timed B-roll shot that's showing you how much it thickened up, started out very, very loose. And over the last hour, all that water and all that moisture cooked out. And what we're left with is super concentrated flavor that sweet salty flavor and we did we tasted it during the cooking process it needed a little bit of salt we added it make sure you taste stuff throughout the cooking process obviously you can't taste something like the pork chop but with with your chutney you can totally taste that just just a little bit and make adjustments maybe maybe it tastes a little bit too uh too cinnamony or something like that add less cinnamon next time make your life easier or sometimes you just need a little bit of salt to so that beautiful thing. Or you need a little bit of salt. Salt is a beautiful thing where it actually adds flavor. Uh, most people don't understand that, and the reason I say that is if, if you're like, oh my god, things, you know, I need, I need a little bit more of this, I need a little bit more of that. Add a little bit of salt before you add anything else and see what happens. Yep. Because sometimes that salt will level up everything. All right, let's do it. Let's do let's, a taste. Let's take some here. photos. Oh, wait, but we got some taste test pieces here. Taste some, taste some taste tests. We'll do the taste. Now that's yours. Why don't you get your own pork, man? Leave mine alone. Why are you trying to touch my pork? Well, chop. Different channel. Hey, cheers. Cheers. How do you hit it? Woo! Oh, you did. Let me tell you what. I was a little worried while you were doing the thing 
I was tasting it, I was like, man, I'm just getting heat elements. Mm -hmm. Totally forgot we did the chutney. When you layer this chutney on top, Sweet that potatoes. sweetness balances the spice perfectly. Yep. Do this at your next backyard barbecue. Take it up a notch. Do it with a nice like garlic mashed potato or something underneath or sweet potato even for some color and like literally pre-plate that stuff like Mikey just gonna show you. It's the way People will be blown away by that. So. Absolutely. This is great. Thank you guys so much for watching today. Please uh, make sure to subscribe to my channel because I need internet love. Thanks for having subscribe. me. Subscribe. Love to see you, brother. Y'all go cook. Peace out. Have fun. Let me take some pictures of it. Thank you.